All right, we've talked about the fact that we tend to have a very strong relationship between the level of disposable income and consumption and savings, um, but we do have some things that we call non-income determinants of consumption and savings. These are things that are not related to disposable income that will cause those things to change. So let's talk about those a little bit. Um, the first non-income determinant is wealth. An increase in wealth causes consumption to go up and savings to go down. The idea is if you feel wealthier, you'll spend more. In recent years, major fluctuations in stock market values have increased the importance of this wealth effect. In fact, we had a re what we call a reverse wealth effect um, in 2000 and 2001 when stock prices fell dramatically. People still owned the same number of stock certificates, but the price fell. They felt less wealthy. And in fact, at that point, we saw spending go down. Some people have jobs that don't provide a steady income. Sales positions that are paid primarily on the basis of commissions may have higher income one year but lower income the next. And studies have shown that individuals will try and keep their consumption um, level stable rather than fluctuating with income. So if someone has high commissions in one year but expects lower commissions the next year, they may not necessarily increase their consumption spending to match their higher income that year. The price level is also um, one of these determinants, and it's related to purchasing power. The idea is if the price level goes up and everything costs more, then we can buy less with a given amount of income, so our purchasing power falls. But if the price level falls and everything costs less, then we can buy more stuff with a given amount of income, and our purchasing power increases. Finally, um, declining interest rates increase the incentive to borrow and consume and they reduce the incentive to save. So their interest rates are going to have an effect on consumption and savings. Think about the purchases of consumer durables, things like new appliances, cars, a new big screen TV. If Best Buy comes out with an offer for 0% interest, that may be just the thing to make you decide to go ahead and buy that TV, right? On the other hand, falling interest rates tend to depress savings. Because one of the reason people save, one of the reasons people save is the interest they can earn on their savings account. But now, because many household expenditures are not really interest sensitive, think things like your utility bills, your groceries, stuff like that, the effective interest rate changes on spending are really quite modest.